Good morning, everybody. Um, I am Mercedes from the Spanish Foundation SETMAR, and I would like to welcome all of you to this webinar on the Prefish project focused on the analysis of the seafood value chain. As many of you know, we in Primefish, we have started uh, from some years ago to a study on how we could strengthen the competitiveness of the European seafood value chain. For that, we are developing a market tool that will offer very interesting insights about the seafood sector. And in the webinar that is going to have place today, we are very much focused, uh, we are very much being focused on the analysis of different value chains that has been done in the framework of the project. So um, during this presentation today, we will have our partners from the University of Stirling, who are the ones who have done this uh, very uh, deep analysis. And we will have also the company Sintisa with George, who has developed the tool that will offer you easy access to the outcomes of this research. Just for you to know, we will continue uh, with the webinars tomorrow with one focus on the British market for seafood and also in December with a similar one, but focus on the Italian seafood market that will be held in Italian. And in January, we will finalize the series of webinars with one focus on sustainability and its role in the seafood sector. Just to remind you, uh, we have a chat window that you might have on the right area of your screen. So please, you can send us all the questions and doubts you may have during the webinar through this window chat so we can deal with all the questions at the end of the webinar. And finally, I would just uh, would like to remind you that the Prime Fish project will be finalized on early 2019 with a final conference that will be held here in Spain, in Vigo, on the 30th January. Just uh, keep uh, updated through our website, www.primefish.eu. And now I would like uh, to give the floor to our colleagues from the University of Stirling. Thank you very much. Hello, um, my name is uh, Dimitr Taskov and uh, I'm going to present today um, the first two uh, sections of the value chain analyzer tool, uh, the report generator and the industry dynamics uh, modules, uh, and the other two uh, modules, G GSI maps and the gross margin calculator we presented by other colleagues from Stirling University. Um, starting with the GVC report generator, uh, it uh, contains uh, information about seven fish species uh, and their value chains originating from a number of, of uh, countries, mostly in, in Europe, um, but also we have um, Vietnam and Canada with Pangasius and Cod, respectively, which uh, have been strategically um, selected for analysis as well as they represent either uh, um, substitute products to European production, or they are raw materials um, for the European processing industry. Um, the, the, the analysis have been based on the global value chain uh, framework, um, which doesn't look just at production, but also at processing and consum consumption, including exports and imports. And the focus of this analysis have been on um, the economic aspects of uh, value chains such as industry structure, costs, prices, profitability, and strategic positioning. Um, the report generator contains some 600 pages of information, and in order to facilitate ease of access uh, to this information to users, they are um, able to filter and select only the relevant parts of this uh, report uh, to them and uh, build customized reports. And uh, this uh, information serves as, a ba as the basis for the other uh, tools uh, 
in this uh, um, value chain analyzer tool. So moving on to the industry dynamics uh, module, um, at the core of this module uh, is the idea that uh, industries are dynamic and, and they change with time. Um, they commonly go through the stages of growth, maturity, and decline. Um, the drivers for these changes are usually uh, changes in demand in the long term, such as demographic changes, um, the availability of sub substitute products, uh, changes in the trends in needs of, of consumers, as well as, um, for example, changes in other industries, uh, technological progress, um, uh, innovation, and the government policies that may um, arrest uh, the growth or promote the growth of an industry. Um, and as the industry progresses through these different stages, the, the nature of competition within the industry uh, also changes. And we commonly see that um, um, the number of businesses and therefore the competition within an industry goes through these phases um, with uh, rise and, and decline with uh, um, consolidation and, and uh, concentration in the, in the phase of maturity. Um, just to illustrate that with an example from the uh, UK salmon industry, um, we see on this uh, graph, the, um, on the x-axis we have the changes in the on year on year on the, in the number of companies, um, and on the y-axis we have the changes year on year in the production output of the industry. And in the early years of the industry here with blue in the 80s, we, we see high growth rate um, and a high uh, number of new entries into the industry. And that's typical of the introduction stage. Uh, later on in the 90s, uh, we have a much lower growth rate and some exits from the industry um, shakeouts. Uh, and uh, it, further on, uh, during the last two de decades, we have even slower growth rate and um, uh, consolidation and concentration continues. And that is indicative of, of maturity stage in the industry. Um, this kind of uh, analysis is uh, possible in, in the tools that you, you see um, later on. It is important in strategic sense because um, companies um, base um, strategies uh, to an extent uh, um, dependent on, on how the industry um, uh, progresses. Um, so, examples of um, st strategies in the mature industry are um, cost reduction, um, either through um, process improvements, such as um, using more advanced technology, automation, uh, waste utilization, or trying to achieve economies of scale through consolidation. Uh, this is typical, again, of the, of the Scottish salmon industry uh, we have seen. Uh, other, uh, other important strategies in this uh, stage are differentiation, uh, which are particularly important for the small companies that uh, uh, are in, in, this, uh, in this stage of the industry. They um, uh, differentiate based on either tangible or intangible attributes and branding. And uh, sustainability certification is something which we will uh, see um, soon uh, by our colleague, Francis Murray. Um, also, value addition is an important uh, strategy in this, uh, in this um, stage of the industry, where companies try to uh, uh, gain more value through um, a value addition, uh, development of more sophisticated products, and vertical integration as well. So I'm uh, giving uh, uh, the floor to Francis Murray now to present uh, standards and certification in Global Summer Initiative. So I'm going to talk a little bit about standards and certifications as a background to one of the tools called the Global Salmon Initiative Map and our value chain and our analyzer. So to start off with a little bit of context, um, sustainability standards are a market-based approach to govern the negative and externalities of business practices. And here in this example, we're mainly concerned with environmental and social standards. 
uh, and these standards attempt to internalize the costs of these negative impacts. There are many types of ownership and certification forms, but there's two key attributes that we are highlighting here in terms of how companies can use these standards for strategic ends. That is, they are all voluntary and they adhere to third party audit auditing systems, which ensure their credibility. Um, these standards are typically framed as consumers directing change through their purchasing power. I think there is a growing consensus, however, that they work through companies using these standards to defend, lead companies in particular, to defend their brands and their reputation against external challenges. Um, these are uh, uh, examples of the main standards, including the ones we focused on. Um, on the top, we can see the range of issues that are covered from food safety. And here we're particularly interested in the social and environmental, a growth area in these standards over recent decades. Um, the key uh, standards in the aquaculture sector are the global, uh, global gap, uh, the global aquaculture alliance, and the World Wildlife Fund standards um, Aquaculture Stewardship Council. Um, so the World Wildlife Fund was instrumental in setting up the standards. It's now independently operated by the Aquaculture Stewardship Council. And this one is of particular relevance to the GSI, the Global Standards, um, the, the Global Salmon Initiative example that we're going to discuss. And then finally, in the fisheries realm, one standard uh, is dominant, the Marine Stewardship Council's fisheries standard. So moving on to the Global Salmon Initiative, this our analysis is looking at this because uh, it involves two things, a commitment to 100% ASC certification uh, of all farms by 2020 and transparency uh, on 18 environmental social performance indicators. So it's a pre-competitive corporate citizenship commitment of global salmon, salmon producers in the most highly consolidated seafood sector. Um, and given this, uh, this remarkable commitment, um, we're, we ask ourselves a question, what, are the strategic, uh, what is the strategic background for this and how does it shape competition strategy? Um, in short, our, uh, a lot of analysis, our conclusions are that the real background for this, the real competitive strategic background for this is um, for social license for the growth ambitions uh, and associated licensing requirements in this sector. Um, these are all things that are key uh, concerns on the shareholders' minds in this sector. And the reason for this 100% commitment to one standard, the Aquaculture Stewardship Certification Standard, is we, uh, we suggest the association of, the, of one of the largest environmental NGOs, the World Wildlife Fund, um, its funding role and background support for the initiation of the standards, although it's important to remember that this is an entirely independent entity going forward. Um, this shows some of the companies uh, um, participating. Um, in 2018, 17 farm companies that were participating were responsible for over 65% of global output by volume. And this shows some of the transparency commitments. In green, the environmental indicators that are published every year, and in red, the social indicators. And then finally, how are we doing? Um, so on the right inset shows the number of salmon entities, salmon farms that have been um, certified under the ASC standard up to 2017 from its inception in 2014. And the larger graph shows the volumes that have, uh, that have been um, certified um, both by the GSSI um, participating members and non-GSI. In short, what this shows is that the standard, the commitment is on track, um, the, the growth continues apace, and it looks as though the uh, commitment is on track towards the 100% uh, commitment by 2020. So in summary, um, most certification schemes do not guarantee a price premium, but as a minimum guarantee content, continued access to certification centric market segments. So we have looked at how the industry can use these standards and certifications more strategically beyond that minimum benefit. And the GSSI is an example of the salmon industry reasserting control of certification to achieve strategic sectoral pre-competitive objectives. And the primary driver 
um, our analysis shows is social license for marine site licensing and future growth. The example also provides strate strategic lessons for other sectors, particularly in the concentrating sectors that my colleague Dimitar described earlier, so sea bass and sea bream in Europe, but also for emergent national sch schemes, which have had a, a very poor track record of, of market adoption, uh, reasons why perhaps they have been unsuccessful on what could be changed. And then finally, it's very important to note that for this kind of pre-competitive initi initiative to be successful, collaborators do need to take a leading role and ownership of the initiative. And finally, um, a preview of the tool associated with this work, um, the GSI standards map, over nearly 1,400 sites we've mapped uh, across the world and the prime fish species you can see on the legend on the right. And in the left are some of the ASC certified, ASC certified sites in Chile highlighted. This is a key area for future growth of the salmon industry, particularly in the very south in region 12. So I'm handing now over to my colleague, John Bostock, to describe the prime fish DSS cross margin calculator. Okay, hello. Apologies, I'll just move our chairs around here. Um, so, um, this is really all about the value that can be obtained from a fish during the processing stage. Um, and it can be appreciated that there's a lot of different options when you're processing the fish, uh, producing various different amounts of different products, particularly in more complex species such as salmon. Um, but there's also costs associated with each of these. So the idea was to put together a simple cost-benefit analysis, uh, which would enable um, anybody to decide what would be the optimum um, ways of utilising the basic raw material. Um, so the idea here is that we're just looking at the primary and secondary processing stage, and it requires manufacturers or anybody using the model um, to work out the per kilo uh, cost of uh, each of each stage and then the value of each product that's produced. Um, this is an example of some work looking at um, salmon processing and you can see the different kinds of uh, byproducts that are produced. Um, the fillets are obviously the main product which can then go on for further processing but there's also the heads, the, the frames, um, skins, belly flaps etc which can also have uh, value in various different ways. The diagram on the right indicates some of the potential usages and uh, the information that we have at present as to how much uh, the production goes into those different products. Um, this is a diagram of the kind of value add uh, during processing produced by Yamofa. And you can see that the raw material here is two euros. And the here we've got losses are... Um, costed at two euros. So this is really one of the key drivers of this work to say how can these losses be converted into gains for processors. Um, and then here we have the other costs associated with the processing. And then finally, a 50 cent, euro cent margin um, for the processor itself. So the final price, um, so we've got a value of two euros for the per kilo for the raw material going to five euros 50 for the X factory price. So the calculator um, is based on putting in a quantity of raw material that you start with and then working out the byproduct yield, the yield for each of the products that you're producing. So this is this column here and um, multiplying the, the yield by the quantities enables uh, the amount of each product to be calculated and we can then put in the cost per kilo to the processor of doing these processing operations and the value per kilo of the products that are produced. And that then obviously allows the final um, uh, amount earned to be calculated on this side. So fairly simple model at the moment, but one that we hope to take forward and to develop into um, to be more flexible and useful on other products in the future. Uh, that's me, thank you. Over to you, Mercedes. 
Thank you very much. So we will now give the floor to Giorgio Sinchisa that will do a show how of the Prime Deals S2. Thank you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Uh, I'm George from Synthesia. I am the developer for the Prime DSS tools, and I will be demonstrating um, the implementation of the tools that we have. Um, I will just uh, ask you to hang on for a second while I'm on the screen. I think you can see everything now. Should be coming up for you <clears throat> in a second. It has. Thank you. All right. Fantastic. So, uh, as usual, uh, we start at the same point uh, for all the tools, which is the DSS framework. As you know, our, our project consists of two main tools, uh, 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 two frameworks that compose the tools. And uh, those frameworks are supposed to work uh, with each other to help uh, users get more information and support on the aquaculture and fisheries industry. Um, so one of the tools is the decision system, which is the DSS you're seeing the screen. And the other one is the wiki, which accompanies that, providing textual support and uh, information on how to use the tool and the research behind the tools. Uh, if you don't have an account, it's easy to register. As you know, you can just come here and click register, complete the information, click submit, and you should receive your login and be able to come to the homepage and enter information. And you should be able to access the tools straight away. Uh, remember, this is uh, an alpha system. Uh, so we're still uh, improving it. Uh, when you log in, you're gonna be redirected to the homepage where you can have a quick access to the wiki and also to the project website, and you have quick access to all of the tools. So the VCA is uh, 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 an early alpha implementation of, of the described uh, information by, by Demeter, John, and Francis. So we are working on uh, adding more data and more functionality to the tools, but you already have the access uh, to this early stage where you can try the tools and, and get some uh, information on different value chains. So I'm gonna start by the report generator. Uh, remember that for the value chain to uh, as the other ones, you, you have a quick link at the home page of the tool that redirects you to the wiki page for the tool where you're gonna have more information about the tool itself. So the value chain is then subdivided in four modules. And the first one is the report generator, which I'll demonstrate. And as uh, Demeter explained, uh, basically the idea is to allow the users to create custom detailed reports on different value chains for the different species in the research. Um, at the moment, uh, the tool works with uh, scraping data from the from the report generated by the University of Sterling and the team that was working on the VCA. But the idea is in the future, uh, we're going to expand this to data mine information from other sources and uh, like the World Economics Forum and, and other different sources that provide good information about value chains and provide this information uh, in this tool as well for users to select. So the idea is that the user can select a species and he, he will have a menu of all the information that is available by uh, about the value chain for this species. So for example, cod, uh, uh, we can do a quick introduction uh, about the value chain. And then we have about information, consolidation in the sector. So I'm gonna get a summary of that. And then we have information about fishery management systems in Norway, Iceland, and Newfoundland. So I'm gonna select a couple of information here. And I'm gonna do the same for a couple of other uh, sections. And then after I'm satisfied with the content that I want for God, I can add this section to my report. And I can continue adding sections. Maybe I want to uh, check and compare this with the uh, Pangasius industry. So I want to also get some information on, on this uh, for my analysis so I can add this. And maybe I want to add yet another species and have some information on that as well. 
And after I add my informations, I can reorganize them as, as, as much as I want. And maybe I want the cut on the top or I want my gases on the top. So I can remove or edit uh, my sections and add more or uh, maybe remove everything at all. So once the user is satisfied with the information that he's uh, selecting for his report, he can click the generate report button and uh, he, he will be able to go through each of the pages in the report and he can get some uh, custom information and uh, maybe he, he wants to quickly jump into the gas use and check the information there. And the idea, of course, is uh, that the tool starts scraping more data and making this available for the users of the report generator. So this is uh, the first module of the tool. The idea is to give uh, users uh, advanced insights uh, about the industry through different collected and mined information. And uh, in the future, we want to expand the sources of the tool. So, uh, the more users they use and the more information that we acquire, the more complete will be the reports that you can use. The second one is the industry dynamics. The second module is the industry dynamics graph. And this is, as Dimitri explained, uh, a graph talking about the evolution of the industry and how this affects uh, uh, the value chain as well. So we have two graphs. The first one is industry structure that, uh, it gives you a static visualization of, of the uh, structure of the industry and how this changes through time. So we can see that we have uh, here in the x-axis the time as passing and a quick legend of all the countries that we have, a quick explanation about uh, each of the parameters that we, we have for you to choose. And then the user can choose between the zero for percentage or this is, of course, the, the uh, industry concentration, the biggest four. And then you have a quick explanation here about the CR4. And you can change this as for industry share in global output as well. And you can see how, for example, the global one, which is 100%, and uh, how all the countries uh, relate to that in uh, different years uh, for different uh, species. Uh, the second graph is the industry evolution, which is an animated graph that talks about uh, the maturity, decline, and growth of uh, of uh, the the companies uh, or the industry in different countries. And the idea is that you can slide uh, the different years and the slider at the top, and you're gonna see how each country performs. And and as uh, Demeter demonstrated, and we're going to be implementing this in this tool uh, in the future as well. Uh, we have in, in this graph showing how the maturity growth and decline of, of each of those countries in the industry is happening. So you can see that in this quadrant here, we have uh, uh, countries that are in, in growth. And as they move towards this quadrant, they are growing to maturity. And then uh, if they are moving below the x-axis, they will be into decline. And then you have this cycle here. And you can accompany how the countries perform and how it's, uh, they, they move through time and how, how the industries relate to that and uh, respond to that idea. So this is the uh, to offer users uh, a little bit of a uh, insights on how the industry is evolving and how rates are changing. And the idea, of course, is that we're going to add more data and more options for the users to filter by species and by country uh, in the future and uh, complete uh, all the information that we have in the research. Uh, now I'm going to move to the GSI, uh, to the maps, uh, the, the Global Salmon Initiative maps or the Global Aquaculture Standards map as we are now calling. And you can click more uh, to click here to find more information, of course, about the web, the, the maps, and it's going to redirect you to the deliverable that talks about that. You can access the full report and have more information about the maps there, as uh, Francis just described in his research. And the map is also in early stages, of course, but for now you can visualize all the um, uh, countries that we have selected and that we have mapped and you can have information about the certification company and, and 
its geographical location. As it is a Google Maps, you can, you know, do everything that you would normally do with a Google Maps. We are also working on making this a little bit more user friendly so the user can uh, choose to filter by different uh, initiatives and select uh, different farm processors uh, in the maps as well. And finally, uh, the gross margin calculator. This John already quickly demonstrated. Of course, uh, this is uh, the one that we are in uh, still developing further. Uh, we need to improve the logic a little bit, but the idea as John described is that you are going to come here, you're going to input uh, the weight of your uh, catches and landings. And for now it's working with uh, cod and you're gonna be able to, of course, uh, input costs and input uh, your margin. And you're going to be able to calculate uh, the gross margin for each of the steps. In the future, we want to allow the user also to select which steps, like for example, the user is not uh, interested in those two first steps, so he can remove this from the calculation. And uh, we also want to be able to allow the user to have uh, more detailed processing steps or maybe uh, a better a better way to uh, I'll input this information. And the idea here is that the user will be quickly able to input some values, uh, the values that are specific to his company and uh, in a very easy and graphical way, get a quick visualization of the possible results and the possible gross margin that he's able to get from his products. And we want to, of course, also extend this to other tools and once uh, our data scraping and data mining is implemented for this tool as well we want to be able to access different sites of data and try to extract information like costs and value added for different countries in the industry as well to help the user get an idea uh, of costs in different industries as well so this is the value chain analyzer uh, if you have any questions, uh, I guess uh, now is the time as well for, for questions and comments. So I'll thank everybody for your attention and I'll pass it back to Mercedes uh, to finalize. Thank you very much. Mm, we would like to remind you that this is, as George has introduced the time for your questions and comments on the webinar. So you can send us to the chat and we will address them to the pertinent person. From my side, I would like very much to, to address one question to the team of the University of Chile. I think that maybe after the work you have done in Prime Fish and as, a, as, as, as the experts that you are in the sector, maybe you can share some key lessons learned for the European companies? Um, hi, Mercedes, thanks for that question. So I think, you know, one of the key things that links certainly the first two, um, two parts of the presentation together was, I think, the lessons that can be learned um, from smaller companies, I think they should look to more consolidated sectors. So we really see that the examples from the salmon industry, extremely consolidated. Example in Scotland at the moment, seven companies pretty much are responsible for all of the production and three or four of them, maybe 80, 85 percent of production. So you know, in our view, there are drivers that will be driving other sectors in the same direction. So we think, for example, in Europe, the sea bass and seam industry can probably learn a lot from the examples that we've presented. And similarly, in the certification field, it's the salmon sector globally that is taking the lead in using these standards in this pre-competitive strategic way. And again, so there's a particular case study, an example of how smaller companies um, or companies in yet as unconsolidated sectors can learn from that example. Thank you very much, Francis. I would like also to ask you whether if a company works on some species that might not be the focus of firefish of this project, let's say that they work uh, maybe with flatfish, 
could they still have something to learn or some information they could use from the work that we have done in Primefish? Um, yeah, definitely. I mean, at the risk of repeating myself, what we're really doing here is presenting a framework, this industry dynamics framework. And the idea is that if you're in any sector, you can position yourself on that framework and then you can cross-reference with case studies, whether it be in the aquaculture or what we've not spoken quite so much of here, given our particular expertise, the fisheries sector as well. But that framework applies across all these sectors because they have similar attributes in terms of this industry dynamic cycle, which tends to operate over and above shorter term economic cycles. Bust and boom, perhaps. Thank you very much. So I've seen that there is no more questions from participants in the chat window. I would like to remind you that you can contact us anytime with any question or doubt that you may have about the project. And to remember you also that tomorrow we will have another webinar, this time uh, focused on the UK seafood market. So thank you all very much for your participation and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. <coughs> I think that was okay. Shame we're going to have more people listening. Mm.